Hi everyone and welcome to the keynote address. Um, thank you very much Steve and Wholesale Investor for inviting me once again to, to be part of uh, one of your fabulous events. I really appreciate it. Um, today I thought it'd be a really great idea to delve into some of the trends that we're seeing out there and specifically what I'm going to talk about today is the new 6040. So of course for those of you in the audience um, we are talking, uh, we are doing this pitch uh, with a lot of Australians uh, in the audience. Um, of course, we're all familiar with the uh, old 60-40, which of course is 60% stocks, 40% bonds, our portfolio strategy. Um, it's our uh, informed opinion that we, we think this is going away. Um, and, and before I go uh, in, into why we think that, uh, let me give you a bit of background on myself. Um, I've had a number of different careers. I've been lucky enough to work in uh, several different industries. Um, there's super fun stuff uh, in space, in cybersecurity, and now in venture capital. Um, in this most recent uh, life, I've been uh, working with Hatcher, and uh, we've done about 339 investments to date. We're a top 20 um, data-driven VC uh, on a global basis. We're the only non-European, non-US uh, VC on that list. And uh, one of the reasons that we've been um, awarded or, or honored with that is that we've, we've created a lot of tech that we use um, as part of our selection process, but also our portfolio management um, process. And uh, we work closely with folks like uh, Wholesale Investor to, uh, to pull their deals into our system, let our investors see that and vice versa. Um, so it's a very nice symbiotic relationship that, uh, that, that we have with, um, with WI. Um, so let's, let's look at briefly at the, at the current sort of idea behind uh, uh, portfolios for the last, I think uh, you could basically say 100 years because really most of the data goes back into the 1920s um, when it's quoted. In fact, you can see on the right hand side here that the reason that, that a 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio has been recommended is that it's returned basically 10% a year for all of that time. Um, best year, interestingly, was uh, 1933, two years after the worst year, which was uh, 1931. And I think those of, those of us that were very recently um, looking on at the uh, 2007 to 2009 sort of period or, or recognize something in that in 2011, we had our biggest crop of unicorns um, that we'd had in a long, long time um, after, yeah, four years after one of the worst um, financial periods. In history, so yeah, these things have a have a uh, they, there is a history there of uh, of, of very bad cycles being um, being rather quickly replaced with very good ones. But in any case, that that's that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. All I wanted to make the point is here is that is that yeah, we've been doing sixty forty for a hundred years, and no one's really questioned that um, until now. Um, and what we're seeing is that there's a new 6040 that's coming and the 60 is now your old 6040. It's stocks and bonds um, that that's 60 percent, if that even. And the new 40 percent is uh, is PE, venture and crypto. And we're going to delve into some of the reasons um, uh, for that. But this is something that it's not just conjecture for us. This is something you're going to hear whenever you attend a wealth management event or whenever you hear an economist speaking. They're talking about a really significant change in how people are allocating um, capital. And there's some good reasons for that. So, yes, there's a new 6040. Why is it happening? We're going to delve into this and we're also going to delve into what does this mean for you um, as investors? So let's start with the, the youngest guys in the room, the millennials. Um, so why are millennials adopting this, this change in strategy around their portfolio? Um, the main reason for that is that they're motivated to get wealthy pretty quickly. And there's a couple of reasons there. They have really high personal debt relative to uh, folks that are older. They tend to have 5.4x more credit card debt, 2.4x more auto loan debt, 1.7x more student loan debt. If you're a parent, of a, uh, of a millennial, then you know that they spend twice as much as you do. And they tend to live a, a more extravagant lifestyle than we did when we were, we were younger. Um, so they're attracted by, by the new 60-40 split because they know that VC investments in crypto are probably going to get them a, a, a bigger hit for their, or a bigger bang for their buck than, uh, than traditional investments. They don't want to wait around for 10% on average a year. Um, they want to go after those 20% average IRRs. It's a Cambridge Associates number, by the way, for, for VC and, and PE. Um, and they also want to go after the crypto returns. And who hasn't sat next to someone on a Friday night and heard them say that I just made you know 10,000% in the last two years? Um, it's frustrating. It's annoying, but it happens to all of us. Um, and I'm not one of those people, by the way. I do have a little bit of crypto, but, uh, but I'm not one of those guys who was smart enough to get in in like 2000 
and 12. I did try, but that's a story for another day. Um, so that's the millennials. Let's look at why um, institutions are now taking a serious look at PE and venture in particular. And the model for this is typically called the Swenson effect after David Swenson, you know, now unfortunately passed away. But when he, was, he took over as CIO at Yale, um, he transformed their allocation policy. Now, this is not dry reading, guys. This is fundamental and super interesting. He basically took a really, a really sort of boring old approach and turned it on its head and started investing massively in private equity and venture and ended up with 15.8% returns um, annualized over a period of many, many years and just completely transformed how institutions view PE and venture. So Instos used to basically maybe do 2 or 3% allocation and, and they've completely transformed this based on what is now called the endowment model after David Swenson. And uh, I was just at a UBS event a few months ago where their head of wealth recommended the endowment model and commented that they were seeing above 20% allocations to PE and venture in many of the family office portfolios. This is UBS, they're the world's largest wealth manager. When they're sharing numbers like that, I think they're reliable numbers and, and they definitely show you that there's a trend um, going on. David Swenson um, deserves a lot of uh, credit for this, um, for this trend. So what else is driving this? There's a $10 trillion transfer going on. I mean, look, there's $145 trillion in assets that are sitting out there managed by asset managers. Um, some of those asset managers are, are you guys, the 600,000 self-managed super funds in Australia. Um, it's estimated that a minimum of $10 trillion is going to pass between generations over the next 20 years. And there's some estimates out there that are crazy uh, much higher than that. Um, I just chose $10 trillion because it's one of the lower estimates. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of money that's going to go from from uh, from grandpa to dad, dad to, uh, to to the kids over the next few years. Um, so where's that money going to go? It's not going to go down the throat of an old 60-40 portfolio. It's almost definitely going to go into VC, PE and crypto. Um, I was recently in Amsterdam. I met with the head of a large family office there and he gave his 16-year-old uh, $50,000 to invest. And I said, how did that go? And he said, well, he said in six months, you turn it into $500,000. I said, that's amazing. I said, crypto? And he said, yeah, crypto. Um, so this is obviously the first choice of a 16-year-old. Um, uh, it was the first investment of my 14-year-old. Um, so the, the younger the family office principal, um, the younger the CIO, the more likely they're going to have a crypto um, stash, uh, but that has just been made far more likely now, we'll talk about this in a second, um, by the fact that there's now ETFs coming out on this security, which is going to radically try and transform um, that. And a lot of people think it's going to drive the cryptocurrencies much higher. Um, I would agree with that. I think it stands to reason that once you have large institutions backing it, just like you know, we talked about with venture just now, that's going to have um, an, an effect. So. What are the other game changers here? What are the other reasons that people are doing this? Well, one of the other reasons people are doing this is this is the most amazing time to be investing in technology. And I'm not saying this is some venture capital guy that wants you to invest in my fund. I, I am actually saying it because of that. But I'm all saying it because this is a truly amazing time. I mean, if you see what's going on in biotech and life sciences now, and the kind of stuff they're coming out with. They're curing previously un incurable forms of cancer. Um, they're extending our lives in so many ways. Um, it's crazy. They're curing things like diabetes, um, which affect uh, up to 15% of the population in some areas. Um, and they're extending our lives. In fact, I, I saw a presentation recently where one of the slides in the presentation made the point that in Japan, they sell more adult diapers than baby diapers or adult nappies and baby nappies. Um, for Australians. And, and uh, that's, that's an interesting statistic. And that won't just be uh, Japan, that's going to be Korea, um, China, Europe, pretty much the rest of the world. Um, as your population ages, and, and young people decide they don't really want to clean up after old people, that's not their chosen life vocation. Um, we're going to require millions of robots and Japan is already well ahead in this area. If you're ever in Tokyo and you can swing it, go by the University of Tokyo's um, innovation division and you'll see some most amazing 
um, the things that they're building there in terms of robotics. We're going to need lots of robotics to do the dirty work. We're also going to need lots of robots um, that are powered by AI to just hold people's hands and, and provide companionship. And I know that sounds probably a bit weird now, uh, but it's happening. And, and, uh, and, and any kind of companionship is better than being lonely. Um, AI does a fantastic job at helping people um, that are facing mental health problems. We just invested in a fantastic mental health app in uh, Indonesia. Um, in Indonesia, there's something like uh, six um, psychologists for every 100,000 people. And so having an AI-powered mental health app is, is really game-changing um, in that environment. But look, of course, AI is going to transform um, music. It's going to write screenplays. It's going to transform everything out there in the environment. And the people that come up with the best versions of that, and we've, we think we've invested in a few of those, um, are going to make a ton of money out of those apps and, and those technologies. Um, crypto, it's game changing. I mean, it's, it's a cross-border currency um, that has some very interesting characteristics that are similar in some respects to precious metals. It's, it's a fascinating area. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It doesn't matter. It's game changing. Um, if you are, I asked, well, I recently asked my 14 year old if he's interested in going to Mars. He's like, why the hell would I want to go to Mars? Um, and uh, he makes a very interesting point. I mean, he has so much fun uh, in the online world that we've created as an alternative to Earth already. So when you think about it, there's really sort of three places we can go to. We can go to Mars, we can go to Earth, we can actually go outside like we used to when we were kids, um, or we can go and inhabit this online world. And the online world is pretty darn amazing. I know there's a lot of people that say stuff about the online world and how much screen time that kids have, but Honestly, if I was a kid now, I'd be like 24 seven online just because some of the stuff you can do there is, is, is really remarkable. Now, we're all aware of the next stuff, but it's, you have to mention it. Um, artificial general intelligence, we use a lot of AI um, at Hatcher. Uh, we've been using it for five, six years and, and three, four, five years ago, it was a bit of a joke. And now it's really amazing what the AI can do. It's, it's phenomenal. And I predict within three or four years, the only business plans um, we will see will be business plans written with the assistance of AI. And then the trick is going to be to figure out how much of the founders in the business plan versus how much of uh, it was created on open AI. Um, climate, uh, I've done a lot of work in, in climate and carbon. Um, uh, uh, I was brought into that space by my cousin, who's based in Melbourne, runs a um, a big um, climate and environmental focused fund there. So he's taught me a lot in that area. It's going to be a massive area for investment. Um, water is, is, is going to be a really big thing um, coming up. We just uh, as co-sponsored a climate summit or a climate cohort rather with Brink. And we're just doing a water um, cohort with R3I Ventures at the moment. Um, Esports, I just talked about online and how fabulous that is. Um, space, EVs. Post oil energy, just take a minute and think about how things get transformed when we start running out of oil and where that energy comes from and how much money can be made there. The same with decarbonized infrastructure. Um, some fantastic um, uh, companies coming up. I just saw a great New Zealand company called Neocrete uh, that's building, um, uh, that's making concrete that, it, that uses 40 to 50% less carbon uh, when it's making it. And it's like, it's much stronger, it lasts much longer. Um, they're going to make a ton of money as all of the bridges, all of the roads, all of the runways in the in the world come up for replacement, which is coming up in the next um, 10 to 30 years. So there's a ton of money to be made in each of these spaces and, of course, um, many more. So why do we do the new 6040? The, the reason that all of us invest is because we want to get wealthy or wealthier. Um, why do millennials do it? Well, for millennials, they need to get something more than the salary they're getting. They need the ability to invest. And, and just a quick side note here, this is why I get so frustrated by legislation or, or, or regulatory moves that attempt to push up um, the, 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 the way that a sophisticated investor or a wholesale investor um, in Aussie terminology um, uh, gets, gets rated because I, I just think it's, it's an awful idea to push younger people out of the um, away from the ability to invest in startups and things that can really significantly increase their chances of getting wealthy. Um, and, and look, the need the, the, to get wealthy is they, they have high pro personal debt, as we've already talked about, but also their costs going forward are significant. Buying a house is, is a much different proposition than it was even 20 years ago. Having more than one kid has become so out of reach for so many people now in Korea, in Japan, 
um, in Singapore, in many parts of the world, that most people are having one. Um, it's just too expensive. So if you want to have more kids, um, then you need to be a wealthy person. I, I actually have a side hustle that's a startup and two of my co-founders and that have eight kids each. Why? Because they're wealthy people. Um, so they're able to have a large number of kids and, 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 um, and carry that, uh, that cost. Uh, the other th reason you need to be healthy is that you're going to face a much larger tax um, burden in, in, your coming, in the coming generation as a millennial than we previously faced. You, we cannot go on with the unsustainable level, unsustainable level that we are now. We are going to face more taxes. Um, having a second passport is probably a good thing to think about um, because of that. Um, my son has three passports. God bless him. He's going to have many choices in his life. Um, and my daughter has two. My son was lucky enough to be born in the uh, US. So he has that extra one. Um, sustainability of food and water is going to require location flexibility, which again is an expensive proposition. And then you've got the other stuff that's coming up. So if you're a smart guy now, if, if you're really good at what you do now, you may have 10 really good years as a programmer. But after that, you may find some challenges um, with AI coming up and stealing your job. And that's for programming, that's for psychology, that's for some of the most deeply um, difficult jobs to do. AI turns out is really, really good at those jobs. So that's the new 6040. Um, we think it's a potential faster path to wealth. Um, capital is abundant right now, um, but the other reason people are going in the direction of venture P and crypto is stocks and commercial real estate are looking pretty toppy. Commercial real estate has a bunch of other channel challenges in that uh, no one in San Francisco turns up into San Francisco on Monday or Friday anymore. And sometimes they don't even turn up on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So if you're a sandwich shop in downtown San Francisco, you're in a pretty crappy world right now because you just don't have enough customers coming into town. Um, the other problems are inflation could reemerge. Your stocks and bonds aren't typically a great hedge against that. Um, but you, if you're earning 20% um, from, from your alternative investments, that's a pretty good thing to look at. The other reason 6040 is something you can do now is because there are all these ways to reach opportunities. So Capital HQ from Steve, Hatcher Fast from us. These are places where you can go and source for deals. We're just about to release the Hatcher Top 100. You can log in, you can find the top 100 startups in the world as judged by our AI engine. Um, Steve, maybe we should talk about putting that up on uh, Cap IQ as well, and we can share some, some deals there. So the other reason that 6040 is appealing is that millennials, yes, they've got a lot of debt. Yes, they're facing some issues with potential future tax burden. But they also kind of know that they've been more potentially de-risked than anyone in their previous in previous generations because their parents are wealthier than previous generations. So buying into crypto startups and things, if they have a few reversals on that, it's not as risky as it would have been for people uh, maybe 20 or 30 or 50 years ago when it would have been consequentially more risky. Right now, there's a little bit of de-risking going on there because they know that that $10 trillion that I talked about earlier is kind of coming their way sometime soon. So that's another reason why it's a lot easier to look at doing the new 6040 um, instead of what it used to be doing the old uh, 6040. So let's finish on how we can participate. The crypto world is now accessible by yeah, ETFs. You can just buy from, a, yeah, from someone that you've heard about or from a name brand um, firm that you, you trust. As I just mentioned, VC opportunities are easier to find and research than ever before. You can use AI to research them. You can use various platforms that are out there um, to look at their deal streams and invest. Um, there's another thing that's changing as well. It used to be founders would, would very much gravitate towards VC firms. But what they've since discovered is that actually family offices have a lot of DNA, a lot of entrepreneurial DNA. And so if you have an intelligent family office, the capital could be more patient capital. The guys running that capital might actually be smarter than some of the VCs that you meet. So there's a lot of capability here that the family offices bring to the table um, that, that is very competitive with what the VCs can bring to the table. Lastly, funds, trusts, SPVs are easier to set up than ever before. Um, if you want to set those up, it literally you can set them up on our platform or other platforms in days. Um, government incentives may be available to you if you set up the right structure in Australia. Um, so it's easier than ever before to go from being an angel investor to being a VC and to, to, uh, and, and to enjoying that, uh, that whole process. Um, so 
hopefully that's a, a, a brief and, uh, and, and helpful overview of what we see coming um, in, the, in the, the, the new world of portfolio weighting and how uh, we, some of the investors that we're interfacing with, um, are, are thinking about that new world and where they're putting their money. Steve, team, thank you again for the invite to, to, uh, to, to be part of this, uh, of, of this great event. And uh, thank you all for listening.